Hello and thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Brian Grady with the City of Madison's Planning Division. Uh, I'll provide an overview of the product from the Manage Madison process, the City's 2018 Comprehensive Plan. This is our May 1, 2018 draft of the plan. It's been released for, released for review by the community, the City's boards, commissions and committees, and ultimately Madison's Common Council. In this overview, I'll provide a background on the project, touch on our engagement with the community, and then highlight what the plan covers and some of its recommendations. I'll start off here, as you can see, we're kind of following along with some expert excerpts from the plan. Uh, here's the table of contents. Uh, here you'll see the different chapters that are in the plan. We start off with the introduction, the engagement process, uh, the growth framework that looks at some of the land use considerations, kind of sets the stage for many of the other uh, more detailed recommendations. And then you'll see the six elements. So here we have land use transportation, neighborhoods and housing, economy and opportunity, culture and character, green and resilient, and effective government. And then uh, to the bottom right, you'll see the different appendices that we have in the plan, which are additional reference materials. To start off with, with the introduction, uh, we'll cover uh, some of the highlights uh, from this section. Um, I want to start off by saying uh, we've had a tremendous response to this uh, project through our request for community feedback throughout the, the process of Imagine Madison. So we wanted to say thank you to everyone that did participate. Uh, it's been a unique process. We've really been developing the plan alongside the community as, as we move along. Uh, rather than uh, city staff or making recommendations and the community react to it, we're kind of putting out information and having the, the plan, have the community develop the plan along with us as we move through the, through the process. We want to say thank you. And we try to reach most, uh, many perspectives in the city to help guide, guide the plan's recommendations. We started off this process with, uh, there's a, a document on our website called City Snapshot that provides a lot of data. And so in starting this process, uh, we gather data that illustrates uh, kind of recent trends in the community, our current situation, as well as uh, projections for the future of Madison. Uh, you'll see this information sprinkled throughout, throughout the plan, and also feel free to check that City Snapshot document to see all this information uh, in one location. But again, you'll see this throughout the plan to kind of highlight uh, the need for, for different uh, recommendations or us to move in, in different directions. Uh, overall, what a comprehensive plan does and kind of how it works, um, the plan looks out and required to look out under a state law that we're operating under, we're required to look out 20 years into the future, and so we call it a 20-year vision, uh, looking uh, far out into the, onto the horizon to think about issues that we need to start addressing now to better be prepared for the future. But we're also required uh, by uh, the law we're operating under uh, to look at, to update the plan every, every 10 years. And so we do have a 10-year focus, and some of our action steps provide more detailed re recommendations for, for the near term. Uh, also, in terms of how the, the plan is intended to, uh, intended to work or how it influences uh, uh, the, com the community, there's kind of really two main things that it does. One, it helps to guide decision-making, and two, it helps to guide investment. And so here, this uh, diagram with the different gears here kind of help illustrates how the plan uh, can, uh, can be used by the community. Uh, it'll impact future decisions, future uh, budgeting, uh, how we spend the time, how we spend money. And then we also, a key part of this is uh, wanting to make sure that uh, we can work with the entire community to implement this plan. So the city, we know, cannot do it all. We have uh, limitations on, on the scope of our work. So we're looking for here uh, community partners to partner with us to implement uh, uh, major parts of this plan. Uh, here's how the plan is, is organized. Uh, there's six elements that, that I just run through on the, on the table of contents. And so these six elements are the kind of the main topic areas that all the recommendations are, are organized under. Uh, under each of the six elements, there are two goals. There's a total of 12 goals. These are kind of uh, statements of where we want to be in the future, what we want to achieve over the long term. We have, uh, uh, within each of the elements and the goals, we have strategies for each of the sections. So we have 50 total strategies, and these are more general approaches to achieving the goals. And then more detailed yet are, are several actions that implement each of the goals and strategies. So these are more near-term steps that we can take to implement the kind of the larger vision. Uh, we also have uh, four guiding lenses or emphasis areas that we've used throughout the process. Uh, these are equity, sustainability, health, and adaptability. And for each of these uh, emphasis areas, we've been using these lenses to kind of elevate community feedback, 
that uh, is, falls under these four topic areas, elevating that feedback, and then our recommendations are really intended to help improve Madison in terms of these four, these four areas. So they've, they've kind of provided much of the foundation for the plan's recommendations. I'm going to touch on briefly here the, the engagement process, which is really a, a, main, a major part of this project. Uh, this this uh, slide right here shows the three uh, phases uh, th that we've covered throughout this process. Uh, it kind of covers what, what we did in each of those phases. Uh, this plan was kind of it was a was created alongside the community, and so rather than creating a final document or what was closer to a final document and then getting feedback on it, we developed this plan alongside the community and basically created an outline as we as we move through these three phases. An outline of the plan, and now more recently in the last two months. Um, city staff has put the, the, the details to this, to this outline, basically, into the final, the final recommendation. Uh, through this process, we've engaged over 15,000 people. Uh, here's a, a number of ways that we reach uh, different, different folks. We really try to reach a, a broad cross-section of the community and use different ways uh, to, to reach out to folks to make sure that we're meeting the needs of, of, uh, of different, different residents and stakeholders. So again, we had a great response from the community. We want to thank everyone for participating in this process uh, really to a, a very large degree. Uh, the next section is the, is the growth framework. And so for here, this, uh, again, as I mentioned, kind of sets the stage from a land use perspective about regarding some of the recommendations. Um, here's a, one of the key maps from the plan, the uh, growth priority areas. Uh, this, there's a lot on this map right here, but it covers... Uh, kind of shows where we want to direct growth uh, through the length, through the the ten year, twenty year time frame that this comp plan will be is, is looking out. So here on this map, we highlight some of the city's main corridors in the uh, kind of the navy blue uh, navy blue bars. These are the main corridors where we're seeing a lot of infill development. Uh, more recently, we want to see that continue. Uh, the circles on this map are are areas where we want to direct growth to more nodes or activity centers where we're seeing again more infill and redevelopment, reusing sites that that are currently underutilized. Uh, and then finally on the, on the edge of the city, in these yellow areas, these are areas where we want to uh, focus our edge growth or our greenfield growth to areas where we already have uh, utilities and other services nearby. So this, this map looks at where we want to direct growth uh, through the, throughout the, the time, time frame of the conference of plan. It can also be used as a filter to help guide our investment. So some of these some of the nodes here uh, shown in, in uh, kind of the bluish color, the transi transitioning centers, are areas we've identified that could be used that could use some investment. Uh, some of these neighborhoods could uh, benefit from having, from having more amenities in close proximity uh, to the residents in these areas, and so we can use this as an it's kind of a layer as a filter to think about uh, where we can direct direct investment throughout the city. Uh, this map here, the generalized future land use map, uh, covers not only where the city exists today but our, our future growth areas. And this is a required map uh, through the state law that we're operating under. Um, this map shows in the different colors different land uses or types of development that, that either exist or we want to see going, going forward. And this is a recommendation. So as the city re, uh, reviews development proposals, whether it be for a commercial building, a new single family, a subdivision, apartments, whatever it might be, uh, our decisions reviewing that project must be consistent with this map, this kind of overall uh, plan for the city's growth going forward. So this map carries a lot of weight um, and uh, helps, again, guide investment, guide, guide decision ma making. Um, you'll see some, uh, some circles with some numbers on this map right here. Uh, these are what we call map notes. And on this next page, you'll see it in the plan. Um, there's a series of 19 map notes that kind of offer more detail to some uh, sites that sites or areas that, that we just couldn't cover with just the one land use recommendation. We want to offer a little more guidance for, for decisions. Uh, so up next here, I'm going to uh, cover, uh, really briefly touch on six, the six elements and cover some of the highlights of each of the sections. Uh, we'll also illustrate how some of the, the strategies and actions work here. Here I'm starting off with the neighborhoods and, and housing element. Um, this looks at just those two things. How can we create more, uh, create better neighborhoods throughout the city, create more housing opportunities. This is one of our main themes. We got a lot of feedback on the plan uh, through the process on this topic area. So in terms of how the plan, the plan works, we start off, there's an introduction um, page for each of the elements. This provides a little bit of background on the overall element. It lists each of the strategies, includes some, we bold some, some of the key terms to kind of see the, the main points of, of this that are in this element. We also here have sprinkled some of that data that I mentioned previously where we provide information on, on kind of the current situation in Madison or things that we need to address going forward. 
And to provide a more detailed look at one of the strategies and actions, uh, if we look at this page right here, uh, this is our second strategy. It looks at supporting development of a wider mix of housing types, size and cost throughout the city. So that's one of the strategies. Uh, there's about uh, seven to nine for each of the, each of the elements. Then for this strategy here, there's three actions, and one I want to mention is kind of this missing middle. We have the graphic here in the bottom right that, that looks at, and really this recommendation talks about trying to create a wider variety of housing types. Uh, overall in our community, we create a lot of, uh, we, we build a lot of multifamily buildings, apartment buildings, and in infill areas, and on the edge of the city. Uh, we develop a lot of single family homes on the edge of the city in greenfield areas. But we're not seeing of more recent decades kind of that missing middle, that wider variety, variety of housing types that covers things such as townhomes, smaller apartment buildings, really another, any other living arrangements. So here this is one of the actions that it's making a recommendation that we, we create more, really try to foster more of this development uh, to create more neighborhoods that are, have a variety of housing types. Um, so that's, for the, that's, for, that's an example of one of the neighborhoods and housing strategies and actions. And then the other elements I'll just touch on real briefly here for lanes and transportation. Uh, this looks at overall kind of how the city, the city's form, uh, how the city's laid out, where our neighborhoods are, uh, how we can make sure that our form is working, working uh, uh, best for the, for the city and the community overall. It also looks at transportation. So these two things are really closely tied together. Our land use impacts, uh, how people move around the city, and how people move around the city uh, can impact what kind of development we want to see along different corridors and different neighborhoods within the, within the, the community. Our next element is economy and opportunity. This is talking about jobs. Let's create, let's create more jobs, a wider variety of jobs, and then also providing more opportunity uh, for folks in the community um, to, to advance and, and to have better and, and uh, more and better access to the jobs that we have. We have a very strong economy, uh, but right now it's just not working for, for everyone. Uh, how can we create better access to, to the economy that we have for all individuals in the, in the community? Our fifth element is uh, culture and character. So this looks at things that uh, really make Madison unique, and there are a lot of unique things about, about the community. It looks at our, our culture and really our rich, rich cultures we have in our community and, and the, some of the character. And so this could be things looking at um, uh, arts. It could be looking at uh, unique events that we have in the community, but also things that define us. And so our geography defines us. Uh, thinking about the view uh, coming down John Nolan Drive, looking downtown, for example, that amazing view uh, that is a defining thing about Madison. This section talks about uh, how can we maintain those great things and also add to it, add more vibrancy uh, throughout the city, throughout the community. Our fifth element is green and resilient. This looks at our parks and open spaces. It also looks, looks at um, more general or natural open spaces. It also looks at some sustainability considerations. So these two things are, are definitely uh, closely tied together. Um, there's a lot of, lot of feedback throughout the process about how uh, we as a community can make sure that uh, we preserving future generations ability to meet their needs and make sure we're using resources in a very sustainable way. And then our last uh, element is effective government and this is a little bit different from the previous the previous five. This it looks at uh, kind of not only how the the city does its work and kind of how we operate uh, but also kind of how we're providing providing services and so here we talk about um, how we can connect with the community, how we can provide services in, in new and innovative ways to all parts of the community, and how can we do things efficiently. So this looks at, uh, for example, a, a long-range facilities plan that would look at where we're citing future, future community facilities to make sure that we're providing the city services in a very efficient and, and equitable manner. So now that I've covered each of the six elements, I want to just run through some of the, uh, some of the uh, items in the, the appendix, kind of some of the uh, supporting materials. I wanted to note that we do have at the end uh, what we call the matrix, which is a, basically a list of all the strategies, actions, and, and lead, the lead city agency in one location. So it's kind of easier to see the overall plan recommendations in one location towards the back of the plan. Uh, we have a glossary in the back. We've really tried to uh, make sure that uh, we're not using jargony term, or if we do, we're going to define that so people can see, see and understand the plan recommendations make, and see if that makes sense to, to, to each and every one of, of the community members. So the glossary is in the back. Uh, we do have, in addition to maps that show up within each of the elements, uh, we do have reference maps in the very back that, again, provide more reference. Some of these are, requ some of these are required by state, the state law we're working under, under, but some of them are also just kind of good reference maps as you all consider the recommendations. And then finally, I'll just, I'll just touch on the, um, uh, the, the process to provide comments uh, on the plan. So we have uh, different ways to provide comments. 
Um, you can visit our website if you uh, go to ImagineMadisonWI.com or just do an internet search for Imagine Madison. Uh, you can go to a program we have, which is Civic Comment, where you can provide comments on the plan, and we'll be taking those comments and then uh, synthesizing them towards the end of the process. Uh, folks can provide comments at one of the Board Commission Committee meetings uh, that this plan will be reviewed at. You can also email or write us, call us, whatever method you prefer to use. Just feel free to get in touch with us and we'll, we'll uh, take your comments and then synthesize them again for a review later on. In terms of the overall process, uh, during the month of May and early June, we'll be visiting uh, many of the city's boards, commissions, committees. Uh, each of those committees will make a recommendation on the plan. Uh, all the recommendations, in addition to the community comments, will then be forwarded to the plan commission and they'll hold a public hearing on June 4th. That's a very key date. So if you're going to provide comments, please provide comments on or before the June 4th public hearing. The Plan Commission will then have a series of work sessions where they'll be reviewing all the comments and they'll make a final recommendation to the Common Council who will then ultimately review the plan and then uh, formally adopt it. So this process we anticipate will, will carry on through, through May, June, July, potentially into August. Uh, for more information, again, just see, our, just see our website for more information and feel free to contact staff. And with that, just want to thank you again for, for watching uh, this overview of the plan. Uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact staff. Again, thank you for watching.